And um, Ephesians 4, 11. In the church who know verse 11 and 12 but don't know 13 and 14. <clears throat> and uh, this was... Uh, Share the word, sing your heart out, and bring glory to Jesus, okay? I'm, I'm excited that the Lord's opening. Sure, sure. Amen. Um, <clears throat> I want you to notice, and, and here's what I, when I read the scripture, here's the deal. I always want you to notice something. What is it that I want you to notice? what the scriptures are saying to us <laughs> not what you've been taught what is it saying to us Amen. all right so let's look at verse 11 and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of christ so i want you to notice right off the cuff that these what people call the fivefold ministry apostles prophets evangelists pastors and teachers First of all, they call that the fivefold ministry, right? Anybody ever heard that before? Uh, in the actual Greek, there's not five. Pastor and teacher is actually the same one. And Mallory can confirm that if she wants to look it up. But that's, it's actually four, but because they counted five in the King James, you see, and that's an example. That is an example of us being taught stuff that we just take for granted and what it must be because there are five of them there, you know, we we need to learn to not accept you know not that you reject it but accept anything except what you have learned from the lord yes let people teach ponder it but don't accept you know ponder what i share with you but don't accept what i say okay only get what you can get from the lord <clears throat> but i want you to notice that these guys all exist for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, to the edifying of the body of Christ. In other words, what is it that God, what is it among those named here that is special to him? Well, it's the end result. The end result he's getting is the, the edifying of the body of Christ. You, you following that? In other words, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher is nothing more than a servant to serve his purposes for helping him get this bride, this body of Christ. You, you, you see that? Well, you know, I want to be an apostle. I want to be, oh, you know. No, you don't, not in the truest sense. You want to be one according to the American way. You want to be something instead of serving something that's in his heart concerning them. I mean, in my case, I can point to it right here. This, for me, is what he loves. And I am simply trying to help that process along. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And people that go to foreign countries, they, they don't understand the culture because their culture of religion is not the same as ours. And they go, no, that's not the way to do it. No, this is the way to do it. You know, uh, we, we get there and we give them food, right? That's one of the common things. We'll go, we'll go give them food, but we'll also give them a fork. Did you know that? We'll give them a fork. And then, we'll, no, don't eat that with your hands. Don't, you know, don't use your tortilla in that way or da 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 we try to Americanize them first, you know. Just let them eat the stuff for God's sake, you know. But no, we've got to make Americans out of everybody, you know. <clears throat> so, but let's continue this little line here. Uh, verse 13, till we all come. So even the, even the edifying of the body of Christ is not the end of this sentence. In other words, this was given, these five, these four, this was given... So that this could come about, bringing about this, 
so that once that is, this will come about. So you understand what I'm saying? I'm trying to find the bottom line, and we keep stopping with the first line we come through. Well, he gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, and I'm one of them, yeah! <laughs> he gave you working toward this, which works towards this, which works towards this, which works towards this, ending with this. Now, what is this bottom thing that we're talking about? Well, we haven't read it yet. That's why God gave us Bibles. Isn't that nice? You glad you got a Bible? I am so glad I got a Bible. Because without the Word of God, then it's just what I say. What I say is garbage unless I'm hearing from the Lord, but then you have to hear from the same Lord. All right, <clears throat> so, till we all come in the unity of the faith, okay, that's good, uh, uh, and of the knowledge of the, the Christ of God, no, that's not what it said, to the knowledge of the Savior, no, that's not what it said, to the knowledge of the Healer, no, that's not what it said, to the knowledge of the, the great deliverer, no, no, to the knowledge of the soon coming king, no, no. I'm naming off all of the stuff that everybody keeps thinking is it. This is it, you know. And ultimately, it's going to be about the Son of God, but there has to be an expanded version. I was thinking about writing a song, I, I jotted it down, I said, uh, just I, when I write songs, I sometimes just jot down a thought, and from that I developed it. I said, you need to expand your understanding of grace. And then the name of the song I put was Grace 3.0. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we need to expand our understanding of the Son of God. Okay? This scripture will help us because it still isn't finished. It still hasn't reached this. It's still naming stuff that adds to it until we arrive at the thing. Okay? That's why it's important to read the scriptures and really read it and go, okay, this is, I can't stop yet. He hasn't finished what he's saying. So, verse uh, 13, um, till we all come to the unity of the faith of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. All right. So, that's that's what it's after. It's do, it wants that, whatever the last thing is, so that, henceforth, we should no longer be children. Okay, now, have we discovered that little phrase, children, in our last class and realized if he's talking to children about not wanting any longer children, what do you suppose he's after? Sons, glory, this big circle has got to be the son, and it's got to be sons. Can I get an amen? Okay, so let's see how that is true, though. Okay, let's not just accept that. Till we all come to the unity of the faith of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a... See that word? It wouldn't hurt you to underline a circle it or do something. A perfect man. All right. We read into that, and we read that that says, till we all come to perfect men. Do we not? We don't see A, that means only one. We see until we all come to perfect man. I'm a perfect man, you're a perfect man. Well, I'm not a perfect man and you ain't either. <laughs> okay? So what is it talking about then? Who is the perfect Man, Jesus, what made him man? He got a body, did he not? That's what makes you a man. If you don't have a body, what are you? In Jamaica, they'd call you a duppy, a spirit, a ghost, a whatever you want to call it, but you, a phantom, but you are not a man, even if, you once were, but now you're haunting my house. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> and so, this perfect man is, let me get it out of the midst of all these circles, 
and let's just see it for what it is, is made up of many members, amen? Some of you have heard me call it the pomegranate stone. Many members, and more than, than I'm drawing on the board within it, but it's more than many members, it's also many sons. All right, so to the knowledge of the Son of God, what knowledge of the Son of God is it seeking for you to know? This reality here, that the Son of God is no longer a single individual with a beard and long hair and sandals and a robe. That's not the Son of God that is now in resurrection anymore. This is the Son of God, and his life is in every member just like my life is in every member of my physical body. Can I get an amen? I don't have, you know, I don't have another life over here in this organ, you know, or in this, this finger right here, you know. I mean, some of you have another life in some of the fingers, but, but that's, you know, between you and God. But the, in truth, there's only one life of the body, and it fills every part. What do we call that? What's the term for it? Christ in you. Okay? Christ in university. That looks like a V. This, he wants you to come to the knowledge of the Son of God, and yet, what, is it, what has been going on before he said, I want you to come to this? Well, you're already being ministered to. Uh, you're, you're being uh, perfecting as a saint. You've been doing the work of the ministry prior to the knowledge that he wants you to come to. Do you, does anybody understand this? This is, this, he's saying you've already been a saint. You've already been being perfected as a saint. You've already been doing the work of the ministry. You've already become edified as the body of Christ in that, in that sense. Because most people understand the body of Christ is a bunch of Christians that get together. Am I right or wrong? But now you're, he wants you in all of that to come to the knowledge of this Son of God. What Son of God is that? The raised Son. Quit worshiping, quit following the Jesus who never died and never rose again. This is the Son of God that is raised. And Ephesians declares that, that he hath raised us up and made us sit together in heavenly places in, in, see, in union with Christ Jesus, him being the life. All right. This right here, uh, sort of to try to, <clears throat> uh, I, I think, Robert asked the question, well, how do we grow up into the fullness of the Son? This is it. This is, well, I didn't finish it, did I? To the, the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. All right. It's not your fullness that he's after. Read it. It is the measure of the stature of his fullness. And you, this is, this is another law of physics and everything that we've discussed in the past. Uh, every cell, every cell, billions of cells, every cell in your body has the full DNA of who you are. So the body and the cell are really one and the same thing in their Core makeup. They are DNA of, or seed of what we are. Can I get amen? Well, that's what this is, okay? I mean, that's biochemistry or whatever. And, um, but there is this reality that the sun is this organism, if you will. He is that. This circle outwardly and everything within it is him. But it's not just generally him. It is specifically him in every part, in the measure of every part. So the fullness that he's trying to bring you to isn't you isolated out here struggling with life's problems and life's dilemmas and the pulls of, 
all this kind of stuff. And, oh, God, how do I grow up and how do I mature? And how, about, how do I become like a son of God? How, how do I become, uh, the, how does it become the fullness of the son of God in me? Well, in reality, the fullness, the fullness can never just be you. It can't, it, you know, till we all come to the measure of the stature. See? So in, in the term that I use a lot is, in other words, the flock is no faster than the slowest sheep. Because that's you. He said, well, you're a pastor. You care about that lazy, no good, foot dragon you. And, and I say, no, it's, that's, and in truth, that is you. That is me. That is us. That slowest one is us. It's me. It's Christ. And if I was the slowest one, even if I was doing stupid things, you know, I always think of Jesus' word, Father, forgive them for they know not what to do. Nine times out of ten when God corrects me, I didn't know it was really that big a deal. I mean, I wouldn't have been doing it if I did. You, do you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's like, geez, I didn't know that was, uh, you know. I mean, one example that I, I used when I first got saved was, you know, I was saved and I was going right along and, you know, happily and everything. And every night I'd open my Bible and I'd light my cigarette up and I'd just be reading the Word of God and I'd just be going, you know, and smoking it and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, I never thought that was a problem. I never, it never occurred to me. And... One night I was reading this after been, you know, searching the scriptures. He's going, oh, I love you, Jesus, and everything. You know, I went, huh, I wonder if this is not good in some way. It never occurred to me. I don't know if that's good or not. I don't know if that's a problem. So I said, Lord, if this is a problem to you, I've tried to quit. I can't do it. You say no, I've quit many times. No, you've never quit. You've only stopped for a while. Can I get an old me from somebody? I, uh, you've never quit. You just stopped for a while, but you're still going. You keep going. So I said, Lord, if this, is, if this is something you don't want me to have, I surrender my wonderful, and I'll say this with all, I will surrender my wonderful enjoyment of getting up in the morning with a good old cup of coffee and a cigarette, which I loved. And to me, it was better than any dessert. It was just, it, you, if you're going to start your day, baby, that's the way to start your day. All right? Breakfast of Breakfast of champions. Sure enough. I mean, just, I loved it. And, you know, I also had fond memories. My mom would be up and we'd sit and talk. And, you know, I had a good relationship with my mom. And, and loved spending time with her and stuff like that. And she smoked and she, she drank coffee. So it was like, yeah, baby, you know. So in my mind, remember what we talked about last class, you have to deny, yeah, deny yourself, you know. But I, I wasn't there yet. I didn't even know that was a factor. In my mind, this, this was good. I was looking forward to spending time with God. I mean, I saw in the tabernacle, it smoked a lot in there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> this big cloud over the tabernacle, and God's in there, baby, he's smoking away. <laughs> you know, I didn't know. I, don't, I didn't know. I mean, I... You talk about innocent. I, you know, I mean, I did. I didn't know. I didn't have a clue. I wasn't pro or con or anything. And, you know, and but but the thought came to me: What if this was? What if he didn't like this? And I thought, Why didn't I think of this before? I have blown smoke all over my Bible. Do you know what I'm saying when I say that? I mean, I mean, that's how I noticed it. I was going, and I saw this guy. I wonder if he don't like that. <laughs> you know. So I just simply said, Lord, if, if you don't want me to smoke, then you take the desire away. Well, I won't tell you the whole story, but I'll tell you the only way I could quit was for God to take the desire away. And, I, and he did. 
eventually. I won't tell you the whole little deal. But he took the desire away, and I didn't know it. I, all of a sudden, I went, oh, these cigarettes taste weird, and then suddenly realized that he had done something in my being. Well, you know, I don't know, 15 years later, when I was working for Denton State School out here, come walking in, and I had a secretary that uh, gave me my morning stuff, and she'd have a cup of coffee there for me and stuff. And I was drinking my coffee, enjoying it. This is 15 years after I got saved, and she smoked. She lit up a cigarette, and I smelled that smoke, and I went, oh, baby. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> I'm serious. And so I, I said, uh, I said, give me one of those cigarettes. And she looked at because she knew I was a Christian, you know, and, she, and a pastor. And she looked at me and she said, you, you sure? I said, sure. She gave it to me and held it for a second. I went, got a light? <laughs> I went, I don't have a light, you know what I mean? She goes, yeah. Are you sure about I said, yeah, I'm sure about this. She lit it. I took a big old drag of that cigarette, man. And I mean, it was like the insides of me exploded. And it was like the Holy Spirit said, get that crap out of my temple. Well, it was out before he said that. Before he even got, I just went, <gasps> Oh, my God, it's nothing like what I remember. <laughs> well, I never read a scripture that said, Thou shalt not smoke. No, I'm just being honest with you. But in this country, you know how far I would have gotten? In ministry, do you, I mean, do you know how many people would have accepted me? The people that already compromise themselves. And I'm sorry I'm putting it that way, but people that already don't care what anybody else thinks or smells or whatever, or, or you know. They're, they're people that, in many cases, they have already themselves. And so you end up with a bunch of, it's, it's like Jesus saying to the rich young ruler, Take everything you got, all you're rich, you're wrong, you're a ruler, take everything you got and sell it and give it to the poor. That's the worst thing you could have said to him. I mean, honestly. And he he went away sad. And I it's not in the Bible, but I can hear the disciples going, after he walks off, Jesus, are you crazy? He's rich. He's young. He's got power. He's a ruler. This guy could have helped our cause. He could have done stuff we never could have done. This guy had so much potential. And Jesus would have said, the very first command is deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. He couldn't handle that. How far down the road do you think we would have got with this before something else came up? I mean, you know, and no, I don't, I don't care if people smoke. I can't. I won't for the glory of God because I, you know, I, it's, it would be like being a stumbling block before I open my mouth. I'll just give you an example. Kenneth Copeland. Most of you didn't know Kenneth Copeland when I knew him when we were working together before I went to Berean. But he was a fat man. Very fat man. I don't mean slightly tubby. Kenneth Copeland was a big old fat boy. I was on his prayer team. If he walked in here now, I'd say, hey, fat boy, where'd all that blubber go? I mean, I'd joke with him and stuff. He was. And one day he was preaching, and he was laying it on about gluttony. <laughs> he said, I can't do this. <laughs> he said, I, you know, because he's in the ministry. You know, you can, 
smoke what you want, you can do whatever you want. But he said, and he told me this, he said, every time I open my mouth, people are going to go, you know, I don't know. What is your dad like? I'm not, no, no video is on you. If, so nobody knows your name or whatever, just shake your head yes or no. If your dad saw somebody that was obese, would he immediately check him off and say, I'm not going to listen to it? Okay, so I'm getting a head shaking. So you don't know where that came from. It's just that anybody who watches these films knows who I talk to when it's directly to the back. <laughs> <laughs> so you're in trouble because he's going to find out. All right, so what am I saying? I can jump from subject to subject, can I not? I can jump from subject to subject, it doesn't matter. How much of a son do we want to become? That's up to you, you have free will. I, I do not do anything based on what I've said so far in this class. I mean that, I mean that with all my heart. Yeah. <laughs> and, that, and that's happened a lot. Right. Okay, now let me ask you this. If you saw just a, a, a regular Christian guy walking down the road, you, just a regular Christian, he wasn't in ministry or anything, he's smoking, you probably would talk to him and hang out and stuff. Right. But But my point is, is that there is, uh, there is this stumbling block that comes to people when we haven't denied ourselves, and in, in, and it's obvious. It's and, and you know I know you know. Let me just say this. You know I'm just talking from my heart right now. You know I hate bringing up subjects like this. It's not. I, I'm not picking on anybody. I'm not. There are. Let me tell you. There are people that will watch these things. That'll go. You know. What? Was it, you know, was well, not a sin to smoke? I, it's, I didn't say it's a sin. I said it's a stumbling block. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. What am I really saying? I'm saying it's a stumbling block, whether it's one thing or the other or this or that. It's a stumbling block to everything you want to reach. It'll, you go, you go, but you'll only go so far. You will. You'll only go so far. And people that you want to listen to you, you'll find they won't. You say it's not right. It may not be right, but it's the way this culture is. You have to live in this culture. And if you care anything about souls and people, you, you know, you're in the boat, start throwing junk out. <laughs> That's the only way. I mean, you know, I, you know I'm going for Jesus. You know, I'm going for Jesus. This is how I'm doing it. I can, you know, while I can't, I can't make Jesus shine out of me in all fullness at this stage, I can start throwing stuff out of the boat. You know? And you do it, and you do it with all your heart, and you don't do it because I said so. I hope you're all listening to me. And not just y'all here, the people on. You do it because you want to be more in the image of Christ. You do it because you want to be a greater son. You do it because the more the things of your preferences or your mind are gotten rid of and replaced with Christ, the more effective you'll be because the more people will see Jesus in you. Yeah. Well, and just even in my own experience, if people don't see a difference between them and you, then... They don't see any change. They don't see anything peculiar. They don't see anything other than what they are. Why well, listen to you? Why well, listen to the message of Christ? We're living the same life. You just right. have a certain set, set of beliefs. Yeah, and I was trying to make a point with that, and I don't know if I got it across, but but it's like, okay, so those people who are really looking for something different, they're going to be turned off from it. But 
I mean, I'm trying to help you. Anybody see things visually? I tend to see things visually better than I do, like, you know, math or whatever like that. Uh, um, so I'm seeing people that might open a door for the message of Christ through me shut that door to me. I'm seeing people that might have been drawn, but they hit a wall, and that wall is my preferences and the things that I'm holding on to when I should be going all out for Jesus. And so after all of those people leave, who is left? Now, I'm just, I'm using, I'm sorry, I'm using one thing. I don't like to use one thing, but I'm smoking. I, we're sitting around, and we're all smoking, saying, man, you don't, you know, uh, I know a guy that used to go in the bars, and that's the only place that he witnessed. And he'd sit in there and drink and smoke with him. <laughs> and that sounds great. <laughs> but the conclusion most of those people came to is that we can sit around and drink and smoke and do pretty much what we've already been doing. You see, as long as I'm, what is it? As long as I'm saying, Oh man, I could just I could wax eloquent with a lot of scriptures right now on that point right there that we are not just saved from hell, that the whole of the scriptures is saying that we've been saved from this present evil world, and that includes all of the things that because in my case, you know, I don't know how we got off on all this, but in my case, in my case, you know, people would say uh, before I even was a Christian, they'd say, you know, because, you know, people were starting to go, well, everybody, you know, they don't like to be around smokers, you know, and look how the world has gone now. My God, can barely smoke anywhere. They said, you know, why do you, you know, why do you smoke, you know? Well, I was smart aleck. I said, I don't smoke. The cigarette does, you know. <laughs> and, and, you know, they would... Uh, have a you know have a problem and they weren't even Christians this wasn't even a Christian issue but I'm sitting in a restaurant and they're sitting in a restaurant and they're going look you know uh, I've got um, asthma and you're smoking and it's really bothering me anybody ever seen the response from some people I have just as much right as the thing and among non-Christians how does that sound if it was all non-Christian, you would say, well, my God, don't you think about anybody but yourself. Mm -hmm. I, I know. Somebody on this video is watching me now and going, I hate this guy. <laughs> but you know, I'm not talking about right and wrong, good and evil. Please get my point. I am talking about, do you really want to have an impact for Christ? Well, you're reducing the amount of death, you're reducing the explosion, you're reducing the, the uh, material that'll go into other people. In the picture that I was painting, all these people sitting around smoking, all these people sitting in the bar and stuff, you end up with, and, and God, it sounds terrible to say it like this, but you end up with a bunch of compromisers who are glad that you exist. Like, oh, man, we're so thankful. Instead of them hypocrites down there, wait a minute. Yeah, I'm glad somebody, because I'm trying to think what a hypocrite would be, you know. Okay. <clears throat> so, <laughs> you, you do the math. I don't know. You know, I can't figure it all out. But I can figure out this thing of denying yourself so that there could be a greater death. Is that, are you following me? That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, Mountain. And see, you, <coughs> go ahead. Right.
if that person's faith is so weak that, and, and the structure and the cultural and the upbringing or whatever they've done is blocking them, right. if that's going to block them from being able to see the Lord, then get it out of the way, man. Well, what are you about? That, what are you about? Could it be said any better? And, okay, now we go back to the end of last class <laughs> where I said, you know, some people would say, you know, this place is a cult because I would make these statements. Well, if somebody just wants to, you know, be saved, would I write it? Be saved and, you know, whatever, and, you know, the only thing they care about is not going to hell, then go find, you know, there, you know how many churches there are in this city that will let you sit there and you can do anything you want as long as you pay your tithes. They love you. Well, here it's different. We don't love you. We. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We don't love you whether you pay your tithes or not. And that has to be in the person's heart. If it's not, that's why we gravitate people like this. Because it is in our heart. But if it's not, then that's a whole other issue. Yes? You know, uh, I, I am very non-judgmental. Uh, for anybody that really, really knows me, I mean really, really knows me, that really knows the real Randy, I am non-religious. In fact, I, I go so far as to say I'm anti-religious. I love Jesus, but I'm not into religion, and I'm not into religious form and going through the motions and jumping through the hoops and the, the, the you know, flaming hoops of, that they want you to jump through. I, I have nothing in me that likes that nor expects that out of you. But many years ago when I got saved and that whole cigarette thing happened and a lot of other stuff because it just kept expanding. That was just a little thing, you know. I decided that I want Jesus all the way as much as I can get in this lifetime. And I meant it. And I still search the scriptures, I still pray, and I, you, would, you, would, you would be shocked at some of the prayers that I pray about myself that I ask God to do. Still, now, even today, uh, and two, three days ago, and a week ago, uh, I am not content with where I'm at. I want more of Jesus. I get upset when something of me raises its ugly head and says, I have a preference. I want to follow Jesus, and if he goes somewhere that I'm, you know, uh, you know, I don't want to follow him into the green pastures 
and then beside the still water, and then he heads for the valley of the shadow of death, and I go, uh-oh, we don't go there, baby. You know, just keep me out here in the green pastures and beside this here still water because it doesn't ruffle me, you know. I have to learn I'm following Jesus, not somewhere. I'm following Jesus wherever he wants to go. And I'm not becoming a zombie. I'm becoming a follower. I, and I mean that. And so, of course, you know, okay, if I mean that and God honors that on any level, he'll let me raise up something. He'll let me raise up a, you know, a Bible class or a Bible school or a, you know, a church that lasts for years and years and years, whereas many of the churches that don't preach this last what? How many years? Seven years? And, and they pass on, and we've seen it over and over in this city. How many churches, how many pastors have come and gone an incredible amount? Well, I don't attribute that to me. I attribute that to God saying, there's a place, there's, first of all, there has to be someone. You think I'm talking about me, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you. I'm saying, if you want something to last, sure we've been under attack. Those are the, all the opportunities for laying down your life. Those are the opportunities for loving, you know, those blessing those who curse you. This is where Christ lives. You think following Jesus is going to make everything perfect. <laughs> you, you got it wrong. And, and the more you say, I want, you know, because we say, he must increase. Every time you say he must increase, you need to write down, I must decrease, because that's the word of God. There's not going to be any increase in your ministry. There's not going to be any longevity in what you're doing. There's not going to be any effectiveness until there's also a decrease of you. It's just the way it is. I didn't make the rules. I didn't make electricity the way it is. You stick your finger in the hole, you get shocked. Amen. Yes, Carolyn. Because man looks on the outward appearance. Go ahead. On their part. On their part to get to see him. Right. In us. And it's and it's and it's not a like you said, it's not a sin part, you know. It's whatever is not God. You know, while you're talking, it just reminded me of a guy that used to be on TV some years ago. He passed away. I won't say his full name, but one of his names is Scott. No, no reflection on Scott Moore as the cameras turn on him. <clears throat> but he was on TV, and he'd sit there, and he'd smoke, and he'd cuss, and I mean, he'd say, well, you know, this thing's by grace. It don't, you know. And, <laughs> and I'm just, something in me is going, this is just so wrong. <laughs> you know, I mean, this is just really wrong and I can't put my finger on everything but it's just wrong and I thought 
how much better to say this really is by grace and I have a lot of grace but uh, to do stuff that I could but I won't do it because while my salvation is grace my life is Christ you understand what I just said there that's that's way more powerful I think we get I don't do it because the law or because the commandments or this and that I could do it I could I could brother Scott my way through this, you know, I could, say, I could cuss people, I could mistreat people. I mean, bad mouth is workers right there on TV and say all this kind of junk. And I, I could do that. And you know what? I think salvation is by grace. But there is a, another angle of grace that relates to the life of Christ. We are saved by his life. And I love, I, I, I'm not worried about hell. I'm not worried about all the things. I'm not even worried about what people think. My God, just think of it. Do you really think I'm worried about what people think? I'm going on for Jesus no matter what. But I am worried about something. I want it to be Christ in me. And when something comes out that isn't Christ, that disturbs me to my core. And I cannot stand it. And I get on my knees and on my heart. And I say, I, you know, just a preference here or this or that or a thought that goes contrary to the way he thinks. I just go, well, how could I do it? It'd be a, like a wife sitting there thinking negative thoughts about her husband all the time. Do you know what I'm saying? How, how would you like that if you were the husband and, you know, your wife, you know, didn't let it out, but, you know, there was a lot of junk going on there, and if you could see it, it'd go right up here, you know? you go, what? You don't even trust me in this situation? Well, my God, I'm, you know, you know, I mean, you'd be flipping out over that kind of stuff. Well, that's just a shadow. What about Jesus? What about us being? for you and that's why I'm, I'm just talking about me. it is not okay buddy and that's the way I treat myself and you better believe it I do that a lot in spirit I jerk myself up no but I don't have anybody else that hardly ever does that well I have people that do it for other reasons but I don't have hardly anybody that will just you know say look you need to go for God I need to hear that so I have to hear it out of you know from the innermost core of my, and David did that too. So why art thou cast down? Hope thou in God, shape up. That was, that was his spirit talking to his soul, you know? And, you know, uh, I think, you know, the, the way the scriptures describe it in Hebrews is, what a blessing to be corrected. Really, honestly, what love. He said, whom he loves, he's correcting in these things. What a wonderful thing to not be allowed to just blindly go on. Well, go on then. Just do whatever you want. You know, if you get in really, really bad trouble, I'll just get you out of the trouble. But you'll still be the same old mess. Is that okay? Well, maybe it is for others. But it ain't okay with me. You know, <laughs> it ain't. Not even a little bit. And like I said, we don't always know when we're doing stuff wrong. You know, I saw another hand over here, didn't I? Did, was, did I get everybody? Yeah, um, you know, and, and what I meant to say when I was talking about the heart condition earlier, it's that it's that heart condition that does what you were saying earlier. <coughs> there's something in me that isn't lined up with you. Like we may not have the, what we call the grace to talk about your love yet. Like you were talking about earlier, it may not be something that we're ready to talk. So right. It's, it's a heart condition that says, I want you more than I want anything else. And right. And I've prayed that so many times. I've prayed this. Lord, I'm not willing, but I'm asking you to make me willing. And he's done it time and time again. And, I, you know, and I've even prayed like this. Lord, I am not willing, <laughs> but Lord, make me willing. I mean, there was that, but Lord, make me willing. Because that's ugly to me. I mean, it is. It's ugly to me. It is ugly. But I, I don't want to walk around in denial either. You know, David going out against Goliath and going, you know, there ain't no giant. Everything's good, you know. 
Well, God's with us. Everything's beautiful, you know. No, dummy. There's a big, ugly giant with big weapons, and he's going to rip you to shreds if you deny him. Admit that he's there, and then go in the Lord. <laughs> you know? And, you know, I've had many a Goliath. You know, he had, what, ten brothers, something like that. He had a lot of brothers. Did you know that? And, and they killed them all off. <laughs> anyway, that's enough of this garbage. You know, I never know why we get off on this kind of stuff. If you're looking for a, a name, seeking a greater death, we really didn't get into uh, the black hole thing, but we did. Because there, the wonderful thing about a black hole is that there is this pull, this gravitational pull. It's the most powerful pull in the universe. You want to be drawn towards something? Instead of drag? <laughs> Instead of drag? <laughs> well, then you're going to like this stuff on the black hole. And we'll deal with that if the Lord doesn't do this stuff with me next week. We'll, we'll get into all this. Father, we love you so much. and Our hearts are with you. And Lord, I just pray right now that uh, no misunderstanding come from what's been shared, but only, the, only that's, that people could truly understand uh, that it comes from a recognition of a desire in people that they want more of you. They truly, with all their heart, want more of you. They just haven't fully settled to get that is going to take less of them. And Father, I'm fighting for those who love you like that. I'm fighting for them. And I'm not condemning. And I'm not trying to make anybody look bad, Father. I'm fighting for the very deepest core heart desire that they have for more of your son, Jesus. So, Father, may the word be received in the true spirit that it's been given, and may it be fruitful to them to reach the ends for which they seek. And may, in years to come, that they just recognize how important that step was as they move deeper and deeper into you. Father, thank you. Thank you for a place for freedom where we all can op openly share without condemnation of others, but share the truth. And may you be glorified. May you be glorified in it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're dismissed. I think Deb's got a... Where are you going to meet at? Back in that corner over there. <laughs>